In one of the biggest NASA surprises in recent years, the space agency has chosen a single launch provider, SpaceX, to return humans to the surface of Moon with their next generation Starship rocket. While a human landing system announcement was expected to happen this month, virtually everyone following the process believed that NASA would select multiple launch provider similar to the commercial resupply and commercial crew program. Having multiple launch providers to accomplish the same task fundamentally insulates NASA and makes sure that they achieve their goal. And with a goal as complex as landing humans back to the surface of moon, redundancy and multiple distinct solutions would obviously be even more desirable. However, contrary to the expectations, NASA instead announced that it has exclusively contracted SpaceX for the next phase of HLS development. Though SpaceX is the only competitor currently testing the rocket which will actually be used in the program, it is quite a big risk for NASA. However, it also seems that NASA has learned some hard lessons from the commercial crew program. The commercial crew was heavily underfunded since the beginning, and at the same time, NASA had selected two launch providers, Boeing and SpaceX. As a result, the launch debuts for both the spacecraft were delayed by several years, forcing NASA to continue their reliance on the Russian Soyuz launches. In addition to this, SpaceX, a complete underdog and a newbie compared to Boeing, has significantly outperformed everyone in the aerospace industry in the past few years. And Boeing's Starliner is at least 18 months behind SpaceX's Crew Dragon, despite getting significantly more funding right from the beginning. During the first phase of the HLS program, NASA had selected three competitors, SpaceX, Dynetics, and a team led by Blue Origin called the National Team. Here too, SpaceX had received the least funding among all the competitors. And it was quite logical to think that at least for the first crewed mission, SpaceX won't be chosen. If we take a look at all the competitors, the National Team and the Dynetic landers were more conventional and the architecture was quite similar to the Apollo landers. And as we know that SpaceX is quite synonymous with unconventional, Starship was the only single-stage landing solution. It also seems that there was some sort of complacency among the other two competitors. In a document, NASA has said that the bid from Dynetics and National Team was each greater than NASA's budget for the SLS program. This meant that NASA could not even support a single launch provider at that cost. Seeing this, SpaceX re-evaluated their bid to around $2.9 billion and made sure that it falls within NASA's budget. So in a swift move, SpaceX ended up being the forerunner and the only selected launch provider. According to the document, SpaceX's bid was lowest among the competitors by a wide margin and NASA also liked Starship's ability to ferry a lot of cargo to and from the surface of Moon, which will greatly improve the potential of scientific operations. However, being the only selected company, the pressure will be high on SpaceX as they will need to make sure that they develop and demonstrate Starship's capabilities before the Artemis mission. So let's take a look at what SpaceX will be doing according to the contract before they actually land astronauts on the moon. The $2.9 billion contract that SpaceX has received includes an uncrewed demonstration of landing the lunar Starship on the surface of moon and also the in-orbit propellant transfer. If the uncrewed landing is successful, then SpaceX will be landing the astronauts on the surface of Moon. The lunar starship is quite different from the one that are designed for Earth and Mars operations. As there is no way of aerobraking on the Moon, the lunar starship won't have any heat shields and aerodynamic surfaces. Along with this, lunar starship is designed to remain in lunar orbit indefinitely. The spacecraft will continuously ferry crew and cargo to and from the surface of Moon once it is placed in the lunar orbit. Additionally, one of the biggest difference we observe in the lunar starship is the presence of the thrusters halfway above the spacecraft. Due to the lower gravity on the moon, any lunar dust that the rocket engine would blow up while landing will take a long time to settle. At the same time, the fine lunar dust can also mess with the electronics equipment on board. In order to solve the lunar dust problem, the lunar starship will be using high power thrusters halfway above the rocket during the final phase of descent. SpaceX also intends to use the same thrusters during liftoff from the lunar surface. Unlike the conventional Starship, Lunar Starship will have smaller crew area and a much larger cargo bay. And it will also be powered by solar arrays located on its nose cone just below the docking port. And according to SpaceX's website, flying between lunar orbit and the surface of Moon, Starship will carry crew, all of the supplies, equipment and science payloads needed for the extensive surface exploration. Another important change that can be spotted in the renders is the new landing leg design for the Starship. As you might already know, the current landing legs of Starship are temporary 
and SpaceX has been working on some improvements for quite some time now. However, it will be important to see if this landing leg design is just for the Lunar Starship or these improvements will also be used for the current Starships as well. All in all, this is a major win for SpaceX and Elon Musk. On the other hand, this announcement is a big blow for Jeff Bezos and his company Blue Origin. Blue Origin has been pitching their lunar lander, known as Blue Moon, ever since 2017. And Jeff Bezos himself has been quite invested in the program to make sure that Blue Origin actually wins the contract, which they obviously haven't. This is just one more in the long streak of setbacks that Blue Origin has faced in the recent times. However, as Jeff Bezos is stepping down as the CEO of Amazon to focus more on Blue Origin, we might see some good progress in the coming few years. But for now at least, they are quite behind SpaceX. SpaceX's win in this contract also means that NASA will now be heavily funding the Starship development. The $2.9 billion contract will boost the progress in the already very rapid moving Starship development process. So for the skeptics who thought that Starship will never come to fruition, this contract essentially requires the success of Starship. This will boost the confidence of SpaceX's team even more. The excitement is surely at the all-time high in the Starship program. Next up, SpaceX will be testing Starship SN15 which is currently undergoing ground testing. And probably, we may even see some full-scale Lunar Starship prototype being built in the future. That's all for this video. If you like the content and want to learn more interesting stuff about Starship and future of space exploration, do consider subscribing the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.